Hello and welcome to Community Notes with Topham. Today my guest is Gareth or Drury from the Rooster Teeth community. Hey man, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well, thank you. So, I've asked you to choose five songs. Uh-huh. Uh, let's just start by going into one of the songs you've chosen and why do you enjoy listening to it? And then hopefully we can go from there. Ooh, alrighty. Um, I'm going to kick it off with a fairly more recent one. Uh, and it's just going to be the theme from The Last of Us. I'm a soundtrack guy, so heads up to anyone that that's, that's my thing. I won't apologize. <laughs> um, I can't really explain what exactly drags me to it. I mean, I love the guitar. It's something I've never played, um, but I've always admired it when it's used properly. And just this theme just nails using a guitar to that right kind of uh, empathetic approach. So I love it. Yeah, there's a lot of, for some reason, the soundtrack to that game really, really amplifies the whole game. It's, yeah. I, I don't think the game would have been as successful as it was without no. the soundtrack. It would have still had all the emotional impact. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. I, but I, without the soundtrack, it's it would be phenomenally hampered because of that. Yeah. I mean, the uh, motion capture and the, and the voice acting are incredible in that game, and it really adds something. But the... The soundtrack kind of paired with it. It's so powerful. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. A thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable game as well. Damn straight. <laughs> so damn good. Oh. So you said you liked listening to the guitar parts of that, uh -huh. but you don't play guitar. No. Um, what instruments do you play? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it could be a fairly sizable list. I mean, cello's my main. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing that since I was seven or eight. I was pretty young. Uh, then I started playing piano a couple of years after that. Uh, flute, I started playing when I was very young. Uh, then I picked up drums, then marimba. Then I pretty much covered all of the rest of the percussion family um, and started playing the hell out of that. Um, and I think, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. So, what made you pick up the cello initially? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, when I was uh, when I was really young, I just started uh, primary school, so I was in kind of like the the uber young years. Um, and my brother's three years older than me, and the school we were in at the time, um, every term they had like a music night in the school. Uh, they'd bring in peripatetic teachers for all of the different instruments, and you could try them out. And I'd heard David play the cello, and and he fell in love with it. I remember at the time, like, I tried a few instruments and that. Uh, I think I'd wanted to play the viola. Um, and <laughs> I remember at the time, the guy said, oh, how old are you? Uh, and I said, I was in reception, you know, just little me. And uh, he, he refused to take me because I was too young. Um, but the cello teacher was kind of, apparently was a bit desperate to kind of get hold of me. And uh, two years later, I think it was, I, I finally decided I actually wanted to play the cello. And that's kind of where it started. I never took it seriously for quite a while. I just kind of did it and went along with it. But the more I played it, the more I realized it's a damn sexy instrument. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic sounding instrument, my friend. Yeah. It always says, like, if there's one instrument that sounds good, no matter who's playing it. Yeah. She's, cello. she's like, it's the cello. I was like, yeah. Oh, man, it just sounds so good. I got a violin. I was going to say recently, but I got it two years ago, two and a half years uh -huh. ago, and I don't really play it that well. And, <laughs> like... If you're not playing it well, then it doesn't sound great and yeah. it requires a lot of practice. But my <laughs> friend's just like, just you should just start with the cello. I was like, yeah, oh, I think I made a mistake there. But <laughs> so beautiful. Uh, there's so much right about the cello. Um, it's got the really deep notes. It's got the high notes. It's got the ability to kind of uh, bring out sound really quickly and kind of get you that more jovial side. But then it's got such a mellow tone to it when you need it most. And so you can just bring it back to something that's truly powerful um, in your emotions. It, it really is quite the instrument. And I've, I've loved every moment of playing my cello. I'm not going to lie. It's been quite the ride already. Ah, wicked. Uh, so let's move on to the next track that you've chosen, a song that you find inspirational. Ooh. Uh, so anyone that ever asks me who my favorite band is, uh, my answer without fail, that's going to be Sigur Rós. Um, 
if you don't know who they are, shame on you. <laughs> They're an Icelandic band, been around for quite a while. Uh, they do sing in Icelandic, so I don't understand a word of what they're saying. And it's very difficult getting translation for some of their songs as well. But the song I chose is Hoppapola. It's a very well-known song. Everyone should know it, regardless of whether they think they do or not. It's a absolutely incredible track. Um, and I, I can't not feel happy when I listen to that track. Especially if you watch it, uh, the music video they did with it as well, um, which was essentially, it was a group of uh, more, more elderly people uh, kind of reliving their younger selves, playing Knock Knock Ginger on younger couples, having fights in the park and, and things like that. It's absolutely adorable music video. Um, and the song itself is beautiful as well. So, yeah. Stop See, yeah, it's, a, it's a really emotive song for something that we don't necessarily understand what yeah. they're singing about. Yeah. Although a lot of their music is like that because they don't necessarily sing with actual language. Yeah, I mean, they uh, created their own modified version of uh, Icelandic, which they use in some of their songs as well. So that's why it's very difficult to find translations because quite often they're just making shit up. <laughs> yeah, they just sing the melody that they want to hear but don't necessarily put the right words to where they want it to be. Yeah, but it's it's kind of... That's the beautiful thing about music, really, is if you have the right sound with the note, it doesn't matter if you're singing in any language. It, it's the sound that makes the note just that little bit more special. Um, and so it, that's why it just works, because they, they nail uh, his like really high-pitched voice, um, singing with his head voice, and with that, just the right word sounds... And then the rest of the music to go around it is just magical. I think it's the only way I could describe it. Yeah, it is a fantastic piece of music. A lot of yeah. their music. Well, their music is... Is their music criti- critically acclaimed? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, yeah. I... Everyone <sighs> knows about it. And yeah, they've, I'm yeah. sure they've won awards for it. They've won lots of awards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the one band that like I really... I have to see live at some point, And I'm really annoyed that I haven't had a chance to yet. Um, but... That's like one of my dream gigs is to see the Rose one without without a doubt. Yeah, cool. Um, taking a step away from the music we were just talking about, mm-hmm. and going back to you, I suppose. Um, do you come from a musical family? Yes. <laughs> um, my grandpa's father was a concert pianist, um, and he was also a, a professional singer. My grandpa then was a pianist as well. Um, my mum. Uh, plays the piano, plays the recorder, uh, plays the guitar and sings. My dad started off playing the French horn in school uh, and then he also picked up guitar and sings as well. And then they both sing in a choir. Um, my sister plays violin. She dabbled a bit in flute and she sings. My brother sings, plays piano, plays cello, plays drums. Uh, and then, yeah, and there's me on the end, the little one who just can't get enough of playing anything, really. Ah, cool. So was it the fact that you'd come from playing all the music and um, that your family were musical that pushed you to head in a musical direction? You went to university for music, yes? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just got a degree in music. Um, yeah. I, I guess so. It's a. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I'd always kind of had. Uh, a kind of a gift for it like my mum was always aware even when I was like incredibly small I could pick up rhythms really quickly and I'd just kind of be tapping along and, and, and making kind of percussive sounds as a very very small child along with uh, whatever she was listening to usually something like Enya going back classic classic sounds there um, but I, I've had such kind of a a broad upbringing when it comes to music that there's not really anything I don't listen to. I mean, there's stuff that I will I will uh, happily listen to a lot more, such as uh, soundtracks and not really classical music. <laughs> like, I play it a lot, but I'd rather I just played it rather than made it everything I did because that would be too much. But, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a huge part of my life the whole time. For sure. Ah, okay, cool. Um, let's, let's move on to the next track that you've chosen. Okay. Um, <laughs> any of the... Three tracks you've chosen without restriction. 
Uh, I'll go with uh the Kraken from Pirates of the Caribbean Two. Um, for the, anyone who doesn't immediately recognize it, if you've seen Pirates of the Caribbean Two, uh, the most recognizable theme for it is the one that's heard as the Kraken is taken down the Black Pearl with Jack on it, and it's just that organ going absolutely nuts. Um, I love it because it's dark and it uses an organ. Uh, in a really effective way. It's not very often you hear an organ in a soundtrack, especially. Um, and there have been a few times when I've been writing music where I've wanted to kind of chuck in an organ, but I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to organ writing. So I, I very quickly kind of put it to the side because I know I'm just going to hash it. But I've always liked that track, builds up with uh, some, some really dark string writing, then brings in kind of the organ, very quietly playing the, the, the theme for the Kraken. And then, and then it just goes, you know what, screw it, let's just go nuts, blares it out, then a lot of more development for, for probably like three minutes, I think. And then it just ends up with uh, the organ just coming back in with like full uh, orchestral rhythmical support for that final Kraken theme as it takes down the Blackpool. Huge, huge piece of music, and I love it. Yeah, it really it's It's so good. Just <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. Cool. So a lot of the music that, I, I guess you've chosen and you've worked on has mm -hmm. some inherent draws from classical. Yeah. Like, so I, I'm I'm aware that the I think it was the final project you were working on for your university course was you've yep. done along the along the lines of Halo music style. If I'm yes. not mistaken, yeah. Um, I actually had to stop that one because it was was becoming too much for the project and i knew i couldn't finish it in time and do it justice but that was part of what i was doing yeah ah okay so <laughs> can we can we talk a bit about that project like, yeah sure how how did you come about being like oh i'll try and pursue this halo-esque style in the music that you were trying to create um well i've always had a fascination with game and film scores um, if there is music in any film or game that just connects with me, then I'm, I'm all for it. Um, and I was reading um, Full of Reach, which is the first of the Halo books. And um, it's pretty much the story that goes around Halo Reach, the game, but it's not the stuff that's shown. Um, and it follows more the story of, like, uh, of John, Spartan 117, as he kind of develops. Uh, from being the kid before he was taken into the program to show him becoming um, Petty Officer. Is that right? I don't know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Since I, read it. I still haven't um, got much Halo done. I'm but still like, oh, were... I need to play the original Halo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Uh, but there were, there were many moments um, when I was reading it where I was kind of, I was seeing uh, the scenes as I was reading them play out in my mind. And... So I kind of had this idea that I wanted to write music for these scenes in the books that weren't in any of uh, any of the games. Um, and I've not seen them in anything else otherwise. Like I've got Halo Legends and I've got Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn and it's not covered in that either. Um, and so there were a couple of fairly major scenes that I, I wanted to try and create a soundtrack for despite the fact there wasn't anything to, to visually go with it. The first one being the opening sequence of the book uh, where you see... Um, John leading an assault on a, on a dug-in covenant position. Um, and that was actually what I was going to write first, but uh, the more I got into it, the more annoyed I got how I was writing it. Um, so I kind of sat back, uh, went through the book again, and then decided I wanted to do uh, the moment that Reach falls. So I wanted to start off on the surface as, uh, as you're witnessing the bases just get absolutely creamed. Um, and then to, to essentially follow a team um, as they kind of get into their pelican, go up to uh, one of the ships above, um, and as they're just watching from the atmosphere of Reach, as their entire planet just gets glassed, and they're just like getting, trying to get further and further away. I didn't really want to stray into the battle to start with, but then the more I read it, the more I realized that if I wanted to stray, uh, to stay true to the book, I kind of had to have the battle bit. So it, it, it's why I ended up not writing it, was because... Um, it was going to be too much music for my portfolio. Um, but, I mean, most most of the planning for that was just me sitting down and 
uh, listening to Marty O'Donnell's music um, and just trying to make sure that I kind of got that that feel and the right sound, but I, I, I also needed to make sure that it wasn't just uh, a blanket copy. Like it had to be, it had to be new and fresh. So it was interesting. Ah, cool. So you, this this might be a bit weird, but you still working on that project? Did you do you still have aspirations to complete it? Or? Yeah, I'm I'm still making um, progress on it, but it's it's one of those things where uh, having to then put it aside to finish my uh, portfolio and uh, moving around after that I've kind of I keep getting put off from finishing it finishing it but it is a, it's still an ongoing project and I, I look forward to uh, nailing it and once I've once I've finished writing it I'm hoping to get it put through uh, some sound libraries so I can actually uh, have um, the a piece of music to be able to show people so they can they can hear what I did that cool I actually would love to hear that when you get Me somewhere too. with it <laughs> yeah cool um Let's move on to the next song that you've chosen. There are a few more questions I wanted to talk about then, but we will step, okay. up, step on and hopefully go back <laughs> to them. Um, what okay. piece of music have you chosen that you find motivational? Oh, okay. So for me, motivational, I saw as the kind of thing I would listen to when I'm out cycling. Um, for those of you who know me, uh, that's, that's kind of my get out, get space and uh, just kind of let my body do its thing. And that's just to go out on my bike and just ride forever so for me it was just the kind of music i would listen to to keep that going and um, one thing that is almost always in my riding mix is it's by a band called propeller heads uh old 90s kind of group um and it's called spy break most people will know it because it was in the soundtrack for the matrix when they're trying to break out um morpheus in the first matrix film when he's captured uh cracking cracking little track uh all electronic rhythm all over the place it's just the kind of thing i need really to keep keep rhythm going on the bike when you've just got absolutely pounding rhythm good tune cracking bass line uh what more could you ask for really yeah it's um it's for me as well that track i was listening to it earlier and um yeah it's it, it's proof that the music doesn't require lyrics and vocals and it's stood yep. on its own like without having yeah. to go to the film it stood on its own as a track that was great without vocals and it didn't need mm. to have the vocals there to push it to where it needed to go. It did it naturally. Well, it, was, it wasn't part of the soundtrack first. That was the thing. It was, um, it's in that album, Decks and Drums and, Rocks and, uh, and Rock and Roll. And it's, uh, I'm trying to think which track number it is. It's somewhere around eight or nine, I think. Um, and it's just amongst all of these things where it's, it's mostly electronic. Most of them have, have lyrics of some kind in them. Uh, but this one, along with, they did a remix of uh, Her Majesty's Secret Service, uh, the Surface? Service, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the James Bond film. They did a remix of the, the theme for that. Um, and I think there's maybe one other, which is without any kind of vocals. But that's just the kind of music they write. And then they uh, the guy who's making The Matrix was like, I think that song will fit in nicely then. It did. <laughs> so they got off pretty well with that. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to hear. So we will step back to uh -huh. a the kind of line that I was going to go for before, and I want to know how do you write? Do you write on the page and you have an idea of how things are going to sound, or do you pick up an instrument and be like, oh, this is roughly where I want to go with it, and then explore from there, or do you just start by playing what you wanted to start with on a on an instrument and then be like okay and then develop from there um usually well pretty much all the time it will be that i'll just sit down at my keyboard or at a piano and i'll just be hitting random notes um mm -hmm. and i'll i'll just like try random collection notes see if um a couple of chords work well together and then there might be the chords sound nice so i'll, I'll work with that and that'll be what i build from or there'll be a couple of notes that move from, from what I played that I kind of like how that feels. Um, and then I'll kind of build from there. Although the, the other thing that occasionally happens, which is what happened with um, Fall of Reach, uh, was that I just, I had this theme in my head um, and I, I knew the instrument I wanted it on. I knew how it sounded. I knew the octaves it needed to be in. Um, 
and it, it was just there playing in my head consistently so i just kind of sat down at the keyboard and, and made sure I, I knew where it was um but for me it I'm, i can't be the kind of person that just has a piece of paper in front of me and i write that's too um it's too cold i i, I like to feel what i'm writing like if i if i can't um play something or listen to something i've written and if, if i don't get anything from listening to it then I'm going to scrap it. Like it's not worth it. Cause for me, I need to feel something when I'm, when I'm listening to music. Yeah. I mean, you can totally um, write things down on the paper and just go to play it. And it just sounds mechanical and horrible and just like, Oh, well that was probably not a good idea, but you can just alter it afterwards. But then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there are people, questionable. there are people out there who can nail it though. To be oh fair. yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely not one of those people. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, for me, it's it's sit down at a keyboard or occasionally with my cello. But if I'm if I'm picking up the cello, it's because I'm writing specifically for it, um, which doesn't happen very often actually. But it's it's a great little one to pick out for for the occasional kind of voice uh, if it, if it needs that color. I mean, there was um, one of the projects that did actually go into my portfolio was a it was a piece for choir in six parts where that literally was just me sat at a keyboard, um, kind of almost just going chord to chord to chord uh, once I had the lyrics to work with um, and then kind of working from there until I was getting these melodies that I liked. Um, and then I had, I knew certain sections how I wanted it to sound and it was kind of finding ways to bridge the gap and kind of get from uh, the chords of this section was based around and then the chords of this section was based around. So it was, uh, it was quite a difficult but fun process, especially when like as someone who sings, and I had housemates at the time who sing as well, so I could kind of get them in and, and we'd sing along with it, make sure that what was written wasn't uh, too crazy on, on each kind of vocal line. Um, and it was just kind of fair for the vocalist. So I, I prefer a more hands-on approach. It allows for a more uh, natural uh, kind of sound in music, for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand that entirely. <laughs> So uh, let's move on to the last track that you have. What is it and why? Why did you choose it? Uh, I was actually kind of stuck for this last track uh, between a few. Uh, one from uh, Born Ultimatum soundtrack. Uh, then there was one from uh, How to Train Your Dragon soundtrack. <laughs> um, two great films. But I ended up going for Fight Club by Lorne Balfe in Assassin's Creed 3. Um, there are a few tracks in, in Creed 3 album that are good, that I love. But this one is one I keep going back to purely because it's just a bit of a it's a bit of a cheeky number. And I always remember when I had to do the brawl missions in Assassin's Creed 3, I didn't mind it because that music would come on. Um, and it's, uh, it's just that, that right kind of string writing that's uh, it's got some life to it. And it, it's a lot of fun to kind of uh, play around while it's going on in the background. That's cool. Um. Yeah, I, I I don't have much to say about that game. I I don't <laughs> have particularly fond memories of playing it, but it's just because I I found how the game controlled itself to be horrendously jarring, and I I didn't enjoy the switch of of the controls, and oh. for me that threw me out of it more than anything else to do with the story or anything, which a lot of people seem to have gripes about. I have I kind of not like really it, many but... issues with it um like it was it was the resolution that was needed not that necessarily the resolution that people wanted and yeah well, I suppose I can understand what they're saying about but I don't necessarily uh, agree with it but <laughs> I got to admit the uh the way they kind of took Desmond out was a little a little disappointing mm -hmm. but um it was I mean <sighs> They kind of got a bit tied down in trying to put too many historical events in, but overall, I kind of I, I enjoyed the game and the music was cracking. And I was sad yeah. to see Lorne Balfe go as well. That's the other thing with Assassin's Creed is you kind of get used to the to the composers and you love them. Jasper Kidd cracked it off with uh, one, two, Brotherhood, uh, and then some some of the Revelations album, uh, and then Lorne Balfe comes in with the rest of Revelations and three, and now. Uh, Brian Tyler doing uh, he did Black Flag. I don't know who's doing uh, Unity and Rogue yet. I should probably find that out. But yeah, they're all they're all good though. That's the thing. Oh yeah, they are they're interesting pieces of music for sure. <laughs> the shanties in four. 
they're you don't excellent. love those shanties. You've got, I've got to hunt down them all at the moment. That's oh. what I'm actually doing. I'm just hunting them all down. I'm just like, oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> yeah. Not far enough into that game, actually, to have even find all of them. So I'm just like, oh, God, I just want more. <laughs> the worst one, actually, for finding things is uh, ship upgrades. You have to do diving to get the treasure maps. To then from the treasure maps, find out where you have to go to get the stuff. Oh, flipping does my head in. Yeah, I can imagine. This I'm not even is... there yet. And I've, I've, well, <laughs> I, I've been playing it today. I've played it for about, I don't know, five, six hours today. I just had not much to do. So it's just like, I'll sit and play Assassin's Creed. Woo! <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, there's so many things to do in that game. And I just like sailing on the sea and um, yep. yeah, just, just getting high wanted level and seeing how long I can survive. <laughs> Yes. Have you taken on the legendary ships though? I've tried to, and I have oh. failed miserably. To be honest, I for what you get at the end of it, not really that big a deal. You can't capture the ships, so you know that's no good for the fleet. And then the other thing is that you just get an upgrade to your ram that makes it a bit stronger. That's it. <laughs> so oh, when that, I finally took like out the fourth one, I was like significantly disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> Had I known that, I probably wouldn't have made like five attempts today and wasted half an hour trying to do it. <laughs> well, I wanted the achievement, so I spent about half a day getting really frustrated at the one where you've got to face two ships. That was Those the first guys. one I found. Don't do not do that one first. No. I'm not even... <laughs> you I'm like, to my percentage yourself. is only 25% in the game, and I'm just like, maybe I shouldn't wow. be doing this. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'll end well. Uh, oh well right let's move on to the final questions i have for you the questions that i ask all of my guests all righty um if you could have any superpower what superpower would it be and which of the songs would be your theme song out of the five songs yes out of five songs uh telekinesis okay is is always going to be my answer um i don't get why people don't figure this out you can make yourself fly if you have telekinesis you can move any object you can pretty much do anything if you have mm -hmm. telekinesis it's a cracking power it would mean getting around would be so much easier i wouldn't have to pay for flights and all that crap um and out of the five i think i'd probably have to go the kraken because i imagine if i had telekinesis it would probably taint my mind a bit and i get a bit crazy so yeah, something darker, so the Kraken, I think. Okay, cool. Uh, the next song is, if you could only listen to one of the songs that you've chosen, which, uh, if you could only listen to one of them for the rest of time, which one would it be? Sigaros, without a doubt. Okay, yeah, I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> I never get bored of that band. Yeah, ah, cool. And completely unrelated, I guess, to the music that you've chosen, um, mm -hmm. What is your favorite album recently? Ooh. Um, Dirty Loops just released their first album, which I was properly stoked for, and I've been listening to that a hell of a lot. So good. Um, so, so good. Yep. <laughs> um, again, they've made a Justin Bieber song acceptable, and it annoys me that they've done this twice now. Um, but, hey, it's good music, so I'll take it. Um, and then I've also getting, uh, been getting back into Red vs. Blue Season uh, 9 soundtrack. Uh, mm -hmm. Gotta love a bit of Jeff Williams every now and again. Yeah. Um, and Creed, pretty much. I have like a few random tracks that I'll listen to as well, but it's pretty much been Creed 3 and 4, uh, Dirty Loops, and uh, I forgot what the other one was immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, memory. Yeah be those ah, cool well now i will give you a chance to promote yourself where can we find you on a the rooster teeth site b other social media um i'm all over the place rooster teeth i'm just drew um pretty much well i am the only person with the name drew because i invented it so if you <laughs> if you want to know crazy stuff about me you could google it although it's a bit arsy to say that um i have a website although it's currently down but that's drew.com um, I have a YouTube channel where I do gaming stuff, but that's currently down because of PC issues. But that's Drew Gaming. Uh, if you go on SoundCloud and look for Drew Music, that's where you'll find some of my tracks. Uh, Twitter, I'm at Drewy. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Really. Well, Xbox Live, Drewy again. So, you know. Oh, and Steam as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, 
with that, thank you very much for being my guest. Thank you for having me on. No problem. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.